Hey guys, Iggy here with Faltec. It is Monday after Christmas. I had a good, well, day and a half off. I ended up working for a little bit. I hope you guys had a good, uh, good holiday. And I got a package and I had no idea who it's from. I still don't know who it's from. And I figured we're going to open it. Uh, and I, and I will, um, do it, do it here. So it's from Pennsylvania and it says a tumbler on it. So I don't, I don't remember talking to anyone about a tumbler. So, but I know who this is from. Hell yeah. Ron Court, president of Kydex. Uh, they're out of Pennsylvania. Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. They sent me a care package, which is pretty awesome. Thanks for sharing all the great Kydex holster advice and recommendations on YouTube. Your experience and knowledge is impressive as promised. Here's a little swag to say thanks. I completely forgot about this, so it, it caught me off guard when I, uh, when I got this box. We appreciate your business and continued support of the Kydex community. When you are headed to Pennsylvania, for any reason, let me know, and I'll give you a tour of the factory. Ron, I will absolutely do that, but let's see what we got. Ooh. All right, we'll set that aside. <laughs> I like swag. I like shirts. Oh, and it says Kydex on it. Oh, absolutely. We're throwing this guy on right now. Oh, got to undo the button. I'm just so excited, guys. There we go. Oh, Kydex Thermoplastics, like a glove. Apparently the shirt's cold. Nip in here. All right. Ooh. Oh, I like that. What else we got in here? Ooh. Kydex Tumbler. I will be using that for my chocolate milk. Koozie. Absolutely. Again, chocolate milk. A pen. Lord knows I need more pen. Oh, and it's a stylus. <laughs> Lord knows I need that. And. Ooh. Tells us colors, grain, thickness. Ooh, I'm liking this. And for writing and designing. Hell yeah. Ron, thank you so much. Those guys over at Kydex. Ooh. This literally made my day. Oh, and, and I'll tell you, buddy. This is going to be going to good use. So, well, set this aside. Oh, definitely don't. You guys see how the pen writes. How does it open? Oh. Oh, it's erasable pen. Okay, this is cool. We gotta see how it writes. Fan, I'm a fan, all right. But I have a cool video for you today, and of course I'm gonna do it in the new swag. I just got in a brand new Pale Horse mold. It is for the 365XL with TLR7 sub, and we are going to be duplicating it and shaving it so it fits the 365 X or the regular or the SAS, it's all the same. And it's really a simple process and doing this will actually save me or save you if you're doing it. It'll save you about $200. Uh, it's $177 for the mold. Oh, I lied, $187 because it's with a flashlight for the mold and for the trim jig. Uh, I personally do them in ambidextrous, but uh, let's go get it. Here we are right here. The reason why I do it ambidextrous, ambidextrous meaning it has the foamy marks on it. Although actually, I just ordered three molds for a store that don't have it, just in case I need to do um, a few other things, but I could add the blocking in. Is it a pain? Absolutely. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to take this and convert it to a regular 365, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, it's gonna be a little difficult, with these guys right here, no big deal. We're gonna shave them, we're gonna do our best. Uh, is it gonna be the same quality he has right out of the box? Probably not, but I'm gonna try. 
Uh, we're just going to do a lot of sanding and a lot of grinding and whatnot. But uh, again, $170 or $187 for this um, left and right inside the waistband. But what we're going to have to do first is drill it, form it, epoxy it, cut it, and then make sure it all works. So it uh, might be a long video. We'll see. I know it's going to take me between the epoxy. The epoxy itself is going to take four hours. Um, it is 1030 now. So let's have some fun. Can you do this by hand? Absolutely. Do you want to use a drill press? So much better. I went ahead. I bought uh, my local Home Depot had this Ryobi kit. I got it because... Uh, I was looking for a small bit that can fit my drill press. Sometimes stuff I try doesn't work, but I wanted the quick detach bit uh, because I was able to get these uh, in there. What size it is? One sixteenth of an inch. That's the size of the uh, air holes that I drill inside or in my molds. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. We're going to set our height and everything. Perfect right there. All right. So if you want to follow me along, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and drill this how I would normally drill anything.
this part is literally can't mess it up. And since I've been doing holsters uh, all morning, oh, I'm only too into it for today. Uh, my heat press is already up to temp. However, I've been doing sublimation this morning, so it is at 450 degrees, or 450 seconds. So I need to lower that back down, get it back to uh, 145. I don't think I'm doing any more sublimation. Uh, I realize that 390 is way too hot for sublimation. It's just like the paper was sticking. So I, I dumped it down to uh, 370, but because I'm doing uh, Kydex again, I'm going to bump it back up to 390 because this is what seems to work better. All right. So while that's heating up, 0 0.06 Kydex. Here we go. 0 0.06 Dex. Super, super flimsy. The only time I use this is one of two things. Number one, this. Number two, dual layer with dual colors, obviously. So, let's get this going. This little guy is up to temp. Again, make sure your Kydex is 100% clean. Everything around it's clean. Now we wait. And what you want to do is get a frame ready that is uh, an appropriate size that you need. Again, steel mesh. You get them on Amazon pretty cheap. I usually cut them to fit. Do they need to be the entire surface of the, uh, the bottom of the mold? Absolutely not. Will it hurt? Absolutely not. Make sure everything is all set here. We have one minute left. Gonna set it up on our bench and we're just gonna make sure that it's as close to level as possible okay so we gotta lift it on this side about as close as we're getting it and uh, I use some kydex no big deal but good that way good this way we're gonna be using uh, aluminum light this is the RC310. As you can see, I use a lot of it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and film, uh, pour it in here and everything. But I also have this, which is uh, just a little dusty. I'm going to clean this off. And if you notice, it could add some more. So I'll use the leftovers on that. We're going to start off by making space. Along with the dogs up here. We're going to take our scale here. Put our mixing bucket right on it. Tear that. So this stuff is um, volume or weight. Yeah, it's a lot easier to do weight. Um, I think we're going to do pretty much, I think it may be a pound of each or half a pound. We'll try that first. We'll figure it out. Wait, I just put the mixing thing. I just had it. Found it. Here's my mixer. It's been well loved. Just throw it in a drill. No big deal. Alright. Get your torch handy. You will need that. What you can do to figure out how much you need is pour water in there and then pour it into the bucket or get your weight and whatnot. Divide that in half and there's your equal parts. I don't care because I got a lot of molds and a lot of stuff to do. So, uh... Part A is the stuff we're going to be mixing first. 
you can get these. Um, they're usually on sale. They're about, I think they're a hundred bucks for the, for the two gallons and then on sales, $80, something like that. But let's see here. Maybe I'll start off with uh, 10 ounces each. Okay, here's my 10 ounces. Yeah, it seems like a good amount. Let's do the other 10. So, let's see here, 16 ounces and a pound. So we're gonna be at one pound, four ounces. will be 10 and 10. There it is. It was actually right on the dot. All right, so you have two minutes to do this because it starts to harden. Okay. Show me how to Dougie. Man, was that the perfect amount or what? Grab your torch. All that's doing, pop the air bubbles. Now the rest, up to God. So that's gonna sit there and cure. While that was outside curing, I ended up sticking it in the snow because I didn't want it to form. I ended up doing technically 13 or 12 holsters, but outside the waistband, sublimation that we did in house, and inside the waistband, same print. I just got to laser them, then they're going out, and as well as an order for Mr. Scott Owens. Finally did yours. I apologize for the wait. I didn't even notice he had a shell order, but uh, 10 shells for his holster company. So uh, that's another thing. If you guys are manufacturing and you know you're not just here to see how it's done, uh, on my website at foultechunlimitedloc.com, I have a page for holster benders where I offer uh, a few molds that I make along with um, a slew of vacuum form shells. So if you guys are in need of anything, they only start at eight dollars a piece and they they go up from there. But um, check this out. Blah. Came out good. We are going to mess with it now because this is going to get cut up. Just mounted the light on my drone. We just need it for size. Let's check it out. So literally all we're doing here, you're just going to line it up to see where we're going to be at. And it looks like right there. Do it again on this side, line it up. And then we just got to figure out where we want this to end. You see, it didn't get sucked down in there that well. That's okay. But. We'll do that. So now what we're going to do is we're cutting this off. We're going to cut that off. 
And because of this, we're going to have to cut that off as well, as best we can. Yay. Not terrible. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and here with the sanding sponge to get um, the unevenness of the bit out and uh, the unevenness of me doing it. So that's literally the next step is I'll sand it a little bit, try and uh, contour it a little, and then we'll drill it and we'll make a holster with it and see how it fits. That's not terrible. You can still see a little bit of a bump. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that out without cutting into the uh, the fixture. So we're not going to worry about that. And then I'm going to get down here as well. Back and forth. And remember... You can also just leave it alone and cut it flush so it has an open bottom. You can do that too. You don't have to do this. But I like the way this looks. That's why I'm doing it.
looking at it, that spot right there, I don't like. And this one doesn't really have it. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to finish this to see how the fit is. Uh, so this one won't be for sale unless I give it away on this channel. But that right there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, drill that out on the molds. But until then, I'm going to finish this and see how it, how it feels. So we know we're going to be right here. And generally when I have holsters like this, like that I make, I'll come up and go something like that. take that out so we can see where that's coming. I'm just going to come up here and we know actually chamber uh, is going to go all the way up to here and then come up. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. Before I go any further, <laughs> further, before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and test the fitment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some hardware in this, and that'll pretty much be all I need to know. Not terrible. I feel like this needs to open up more. If you notice how that is, like so. But other than that, it's got a pretty good hump to it. Now that could be just because of this right here that it's doing that. But other than that, this actually feels really good. All in all, it really wasn't that bad. Obviously, I can't use this trim jig with it because we cut out this section. So if I want to use this trim jig, I will have to cut out that section. Probably going to do it so I don't have to make my own because it's, it's right here. So I'll do that down the line. But you saw how I did the mold, so it's going to be the same thing for here. And judging by or the thinness of this part here, that was my bad. Because the way I had this bolted, it was like this. So I just eased up on one, tightened the other, and it evened out. So that was me. So now it goes right in. So, uh, but again, this little spot right here, you can see that I am going to get rid of that on the mold. And that is just taking my Dremel and then just carving it away. So now you know that if you buy a certain mold from Pale Horse Solutions, i.e. this, you can duplicate it. And make another one so really you get two for the price of one and that'll save you 200 bucks if you don't want to do it and spend the time because it is now 2 30 so i started this at 10 30 plus lunch and you know so it did like i said it took a little bit of time but is that time worth it to save a couple hundred bucks or you just want to get stuff out and wait for a new mold to come in i however just ordered three more molds that i need for a store order and um i'll do this when i can Luckily, the 365X and the 365XL are the same holster. Um, they work with each other, but obviously larger doesn't fit in the smaller one, so you got to be smart with that. Same thing with the Glock 48 and the Glock 43X. Same holster, but different lengths, so you can do that as well. So, um, have fun. Hope you had a Merry Christmas. And like I said, maybe I'll just give this one away. I have no use for it. I'm not going to sell it. 
um, because I don't like this spot right here. Like I said, this one was a test one. So maybe I'll just give it away. We'll see. So I'll actually tell you what. So if you have a 365 with a uh, TLR7 sub and you want this particular holster, I will um, clean it up, finish it, and mail it right to you. And you can tell me how you like it. So drop a comment below. Thanks for watching. And as always, you rock.